What's up guys, Sam Adams here, and tonight we're going to be talking on the topic of Batman Arkham Knight, the upcoming fourth entry into the Batman Arkham franchise, coming from Rocksteady. And uh, previously, since 2009, we've seen Arkham Asylum, the first entry, Arkham City, the second, uh, Origins Blackgate, a mobile entry that you might not have been familiar with, and now we're getting Arkham Knight. And earlier this week it was announced that the game would actually be rated M for Mature here in America, and presumably Peggy 18 elsewhere. And uh, the uh, founder of Rocksteady Studios, Sefton Hill, actually commented on this and said during the development process, no one was concerned with what the game would be rated. They had a story that they wanted to tell, they had a game that they wanted to develop, and they just went out and made it. And I think that this is something that we should see more of in the industry. I don't know this for fact, but I feel like a lot of games are toned and pulled back from what they could be just because the developer is trying to reach the widest audience possible. So. If you have a game that is uh, made to be rated M and then you pull certain elements out of it and make it rated T so that you can reach that teen audience because some parents don't let their teenagers play M games, then you're kind of sacrificing your creative output and your creative voice whenever you take stuff out of that just to reach a wider audience and it's comforting to see that Rocksteady isn't doing that with this entry. Of course the previous games have all been rated T for teen and uh, this is the first one rated M as I mentioned so I think that Rocksteady what they were doing previously is getting that bare fan base developed so that they have a platform to build on and now with the fourth entry into the franchise they're finally able to make some creative decisions and kind of push the limits and boundaries of where they can make this Batman franchise go, and I think that's pretty awesome. Also earlier this week, a trailer was released showing off the game, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. A couple of the things that I want to mention are the character models. My favorite is Two-Face, because the detail in his complexion is something that I have never seen in a Batman game before, and obviously that's because it's on the new generation consoles, and this is, you know, kind of cutscene footage, but it does look absolutely beautiful. I like how the Riddler, his character model is amazing. Poison Ivy has been kind of pulled back on the sexiness a little bit. If you are familiar with Arkham City, she was in that game and it seemed like she was kind of showing a little bit too much cleavage and a little bit too flaunty. And now it seems like there is a more realistic representation of the character model and that's something that I welcome into the franchise. In addition to this, the Batmobile does appear to be a playable gadget. There was actually some gameplay, driving gameplay of the Batmobile and actually a takedown where you are launched or ejected from the vehicle and then you land and take down a villain, which is a pretty cool concept and something that I hope is actually able to be used in the game. One thing that I find really cool about Batman Arkham Knight in the trailer is that the Joker is nowhere to be seen. In fact, it seems that Scarecrow is the main villain of this game, which is pretty cool because in Arkham Asylum there were several Scarecrow missions that really played with the psychological mindset of Batman and made him strain a little bit harder in the mental side of things, which is a pretty cool concept. I like it whenever the villain manipulates the character instead of just hand-to-hand -hand combat or physical punishment. It's pretty cool to see that kind of thing, and I hope to see a lot of of that gameplay in Arkham Knight, but the fact that the Joker isn't in it is pretty great because I think that what Rocksteady was trying to do with the past two entries, kind of along the same way they were building up the fan base, is that whenever you put the Joker and Batman in the game, you're obviously going to sell copies because the Joker is the one villain that is always associated with Batman. So whenever you see that he's in the game, you automatically think of a classic Batman experience and that's going to sell copies. So again, it seems that with Arkham Knight, Rocksteady is definitely taking some chances and that's something that I welcome yet again. So there you guys have it. Those are my thoughts on the new Batman Arkham Knight rating and trailer. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like down below and comment what you think of the trailer. I'll link it in the description down below. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to head over and check out some of my other videos. I've had a lot of uploads this past week. There is definitely a lot of stuff for you guys to watch over there. And as always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for taking the time to watch this video. And again, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.